In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his last and beloved Majlal Muhammad, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. This is the fourth part of a series entitled Discoveries from the Quran. And this series I show with the guidance of Allah God Almighty, the superiority of the knowledge of Allah in the Quran, in the last revelation to people, over the knowledge of people in this day and age. And how a believer can be the teacher of others by pondering upon the verses of the Quran. So the topic in this presentation is the future of the study and teaching of history. Now, what do I mean by this? If we think about how the current method in teaching history, let me give an example. A person is given a date, let's say, for example, he's taught that the Second World War started in 1939 and ended in 1945. He's given this information, he has to memorize it, and then in the exam, he writes down the date and he gets a full mark. Now, the problem with this is that the student doesn't feel that this, that history, or this kind of information he's given, has an effect in, on his life. He doesn't, he doesn't practice this information in his life. So he, most of the time, students, they find history boring and um, useless. Now, is this the value of history? So there is, of course not. So there is a problem in the way we teach history. That's the only logical conclusion here. Because history is important, but the way we teach it, that's the problem. So, if we go to the Qur'an and ask Allah God Almighty, what, how, what's the best way of learning history? Because the Qur'an has so much information about the previous nations, about people of old. So, if we ponder upon the verses of the Qur'an, Allah God Almighty teaches us the best way to learn history by pondering upon only one verse of the Qur'an. And that's verse number 62 of chapter 33 of the Qur'an, which reads, this is translation, That was the way of Allah God in the case of those who passed away of old, and you will not find any change in the way of Allah God. So Allah here is teaching us how we should learn history. Allah is telling us here that Allah has a certain way of dealing with people, and that way is constant, never changing. People in the past, present and future, Allah deals with them in the same way. So, based from this verse, we can get an equation for history, the equation you see right here. So, the equation, put it like um, chemistry, we have substance A reacts with B to give C. Now, always A, the deeds of people, and B, having people, C, actions, by Allah God Almighty. So always, when we have people, and they do certain deeds, this reaction always produces an action by Allah God Almighty. And this action by Allah is constant, never changing. So this is an equation for history from the Quran. So this explains why people sometimes they say that history repeats itself. It's not that history repeats itself is that the way of Allah God Almighty in dealing with people is constant, never changing. So in the past or the present or the future, when people, they do certain deeds, the, the action taken by Allah God Almighty is the same. It's not that, as again, it's history that repeats itself. Um, okay, to understand this further, when Allah tells us in the Quran about the affairs of the people in the past, so Allah is telling us about the past to understand the present and then to predict the future and this is for making changes to the present so it's like a, a closed loop kind of a control system so again Allah is telling us about the past to understand our present and to predict the future and to make changes now to change the future let me give you an example to illustrate this point in the Quran, Allah tells us about the Romans and old um, people of old, the Romans. And the 
present people, for example, the European and the Americans, they are descended from the Romans. So Allah is telling us about the Romans in the Quran in chapter 30, verses 2 and 3. This translation, the Romans have been defeated in the lowest land and they after their defeat will be victorious. So Allah is telling us about, about the Romans. And if you ponder upon these verses, you see that there is a main characteristic that Allah is telling us about the Romans, that they love war. So the main characteristic that Allah describes the Romans with in the Quran, that they love to wage war. They love to conquer. They, they, they love war. And if we think now about, that's the city of the past. As I said, we need to understand our present from this um, knowledge. If we think about the First World War, the Second World War, the Crusades, the um, occupations done by European and American nations, we can understand our present, that the Americans and the Europeans, they love to wage war. So we study, Allah told us about the past to understand our present and to predict the future. How to predict the future? That the harm inflicted on people by the Europeans and the Americans will increase in the future. So how that's the third part. The fourth is to make changes now to prevent this future. So as Muslims, we need to do two things. Firstly, we need to strive to make the word of Allah God supreme, to tell the Europeans and the Americans about Islam, about the mercy of Allah God Almighty, about the last revelation of Allah God to people. Now, if we do that, and let me give you an example that happened with me during my study in England. So in England, I went there at the beginning of my master's degree as a student and before Allah guided me to this knowledge from the Quran and I used to take exercises, exams and like a student, normal and I used to see in their eyes and in what they say not that much respect and sometimes they hurt me with the words they, they say to me now in Britain when I was doing my masters and PhD, Allah started to guide me to what you are hearing uh, in these presentations, to knowledge from the Quran. And I started telling people in England that the Quran is telling me this, giving me the answers in engineering, in physics, and so forth. Now, I noticed that their looks and the way they spoke to me changed. There was much more respect not the, you know, like loving, but respect. So, striving and telling people about the Qur'an and the signs of the Qur'an and how can learn knowledge from the Qur'an, it, 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 it may, they make them respect you. And they think so, so many times before they, they even think to harm you. That's the first thing. The second action that we, we need as Muslims to strengthen ourselves to become strong and the basis for strength is knowledge and the, and the book of knowledge for the Muslims is the Quran so we need to ponder upon the Quran and apply it as you can see in my presentations so I hope from this example you saw the beauty of studying history now Allah is telling you about the past to understand the present to predict the future and to make changes in your present time to prevent this future Okay, um, I hope that was clear. And you see how it's, even when you're listening, you are, you are enjoying. But the current way of teaching history by giving dates and names and just to memorize them, it's boring and, and the way it's taught, it doesn't have any kind of effect in your life. And it's something that you, do, you don't practice in your life. It's not that important to you. Um, and to know more details about this topic, please visit my website at www. Quran-miracle.com. This is the website, and you can email me at zquran at yahoo.com. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all.